When delivering Power BI solutions, we tend to think that it only involves developing a functioning report. Now, while the development process is critical to your success, it's also important to know that it's one part to the whole solution. Similar to how you'd run a restaurant, there's more to it than just creating a perfect dish. Now, the importance of it is probably not so noticeable if you're working with an individual or a small team, but having a solution becomes far more important when you start working with large organizations. In this video, I wanna give you guys an insight on the general approach that I tend to follow when delivering Power BI solution to my clients. Throughout the process, I'll sprinkle in some tips on any pitfalls that you might encounter based on my experience. And if you decide to stick around to the very end, I will share with you some of the methodologies that Microsoft recommends you to follow. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So I've spent about three years delivering Power BI solutions to different clients. So the tips that I have here are mostly what I learned on the job. And this list never really existed until today. But looking back at all of my experiences, I roughly followed these four stages for the most of them. Stage one is get current state of BI. Two is create a proof of concept. Three, deliver and deploy. And stage four is support. In my experience, this approach works best on business-led projects. So the initiative comes from the business. It also works on projects that have ambiguous requirements or the reporting maturity is low. We'll try to do a deep dive on what exactly I did on each of these stages. And just a quick disclaimer before we start to say that I developed these stages on the job based on my experience. And that is that this approach worked best for me. Now this means that it might not necessarily work for you or for your scenario. So take my advice here with a grain of salt and use it as more of an inspiration to add towards your own process. So stage one is to get the current state of BI. In this stage, it means identifying your key stakeholders. So who are your corporate stakeholders that can push culture change? Who are your champions? The ones that can help you evangelize the solution? Who are the technical teams that can help you with access or permissions. You also want to identify what reports currently exist in the company. What format are they presented on in Word or Excel or PowerPoint? How frequent they're delivered? Who are the target audiences? Why they're being reported? what decisions are driven from them. You also want to identify where the data is coming from. So what systems are they being pulled from and what is the process? This stage is super important in order to get a good understanding of the current state of BI is in the company, especially if your requirements are ambiguous. The purpose of this stage is to find out what value Power BI can add to the current state. Is it automation in order to save time and money to the business? Is it centralization of data to get a single source of truth? Is it security to introduce some semblance of access control? Is it scalability to build a platform that can support expansion for future reports? Or is it agility to gain quick insights to drive better decisions? It's important to align your goals with the business and define what success means upfront. Once I've defined these, I move on to the next step, which is to create a proof of concept. The aim of this stage is to demonstrate the capabilities of Power BI as a tool and how well it can satisfy their needs through a prototype. The prototype gives your clients a small taste of the solution, not to tell them, but to show them through a prototype and get their buy-in for the project. When choosing the right prototype for this stage, Make sure that it's a small report that can be finished in around one to two days of development. Make sure to choose a report and data set that is relevant to your client, preferably replicating some aspects from a previous report. I find that clients are more invested in the proof of concept when they're familiar with the data. So you wanna be looking for low effort, high impact type of reports. If there are no previous reports that you can replicate from, so just some industry standard reporting for the data that you have. Sam from Enterprise DNA has tons of sample reports that he has available on his website that you can play around using his live demos. So check it out. Once you have buy-in from your corporate stakeholders, you'll have more chance to push for change in data culture. It's a good opportunity at this point to start cultivating your stakeholder relationship 
through clear, transparent communication. Good communication is key to the success of your project and should actually be done throughout all of the stages. So we'll touch on this in a little bit. Once I've got buy-in, I typically follow an agile style of project management, which basically means rapid prototyping of the reports. Find as data becomes available, plus any feedback from the client. The purpose of this is to start uncovering the requirements through iteration with the clients and as new data sources and reports come about. Iterating through several versions with the clients also help them understand what is possible with Power BI. It's my responsibility as the specialist to show them how the final product might look like. A typical issue that comes at this process is scope creep, which is when more feedback and change comes in beyond the time and scope of your project. This type of problem normally happens, especially if you have ambiguous requirements to begin with. So it's also my job to set and manage expectations and to stay transparent on its implications towards time and effort. I use cutoff dates where I set a deadline line of when the last changes and feedbacks can come through for the final product. This ensures that I have enough time to action these feedback and changes for the final release. If there are any more feedbacks or changes that were proposed after the cutoff date, I usually propose these to come as a feature update after the final release to make sure we don't keep moving the goalposts. Once I've uncovered the final requirements for the solution, I move on to stage three, which is deliver and deploy. So processes like rollout plans, data architecture, data governance, security, along with the final report completion needs to be finished at this stage. Ideally, these should have been in motion in parallel during report development. If you're not sure what these are, don't worry. I'm linking a great resource in the description box below that goes through in detail exactly what you need to do for these. Now is a good time to touch on communication, which is key to delivering these kinds of Power BI solutions. As I said before, good communication should have been done throughout the different stages of this approach. And I accomplish these in a number of different ways. Usually I organize a regular catch-up meeting with the business to get some feedback on the development process. I also catch up regularly with IT with regards to any technical requirements of the project. Most of my corporate stakeholders don't have enough time to catch up with me regularly. So I keep them up to date using weekly email newsletters. These are usually in the form of an email and it contains high level information about the project and its progress and some relevant information like new features implemented or the rollout plan. Once the solution is delivered and deployed, I move on to stage four, which is support. The aim of this stage is to ensure the longevity of the solution, that it functions correctly and that the users are getting value out of them. I typically monitor things like performance, usage patterns or outages at this point. I hold different types of training workshops to help users learn about the solution or how to use Power BI in general. I even hold technical workshops to help the internal technical team understand how the solution is built. Along with these, I also build out documentations to support the solution that was deployed. I build user guide documents to help stakeholders on how to use the report and how to interpret the data. I will also build technical specification documents for the IT team to show the inner workings of the solution. This pretty much acts as a knowledge transfer. So that means any issues encountered afterwards uh, can be quickly resolved. In addition to these, I would also build an FAQ to answer common issues that users get when they use the solution. The last thing that I do is to cultivate the interests on the solution and Power BI. I do this by providing interesting insights through data stories using the solution itself. Doing these sounds a bit redundant because we want them to be doing it themselves. Doing this really helps stimulate your users' imaginations on what is possible, especially if they're not used to the self-service style of Power BI. Another way would also be to show them what is possible through video. So for example, creating a video showcasing any upcoming features of what is possible in Power BI. This can get your users excited 
and see new possibilities for new projects. Congratulations if you lasted up to this point. It sounds like we've covered a lot, but I'm really just scratching the surface of my approach when it comes to delivery. If you want to sink in your teeth in a little bit more detail, I'm linking to you Microsoft's Power BI Adoption Framework. It's a video series that goes through Microsoft's recommended methodology that you follow when it comes to Power BI delivery. It slightly differs from my approach and it's a relatively new release. So so I'll probably check it out and get some inspirations for my approach. If you're a masochist and still want more detail, Microsoft has a catalog of white papers on Power BI, which is a collection of documents that goes in painstaking detail on the various aspects of Power BI. So topics like enterprise deployment, data governance, security, and all of that good stuff. So what did you think? Did I miss any steps that you would have done? Let me know in the comment section below. Give this video a like if it helped you. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links that I added in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching this video. See you guys again in the next one.